Thank you so much for the presentations. Uh, good morning, I'm Greg. I'm a technical advisor to SHIP program. Um, actually, I'm not sure it's a question or a comment, but I think one, one maybe glaring gap or challenge for ensuring that all people can access universal health care is perhaps the need to be registered, to actually be employed so they can have an insurance card. Do you have any tips, guidance, um, strategies, how we can ensure that those who are most marginalized when within the communities can actually better access services given we know that there are some of these challenges that exist in reality for people in terms of accessing be it AR, AR, ART or even um, uh, needle exchange, etc. Thank you. So may I ask two more questions and then we'll, we'll ask the speakers to respond to the three questions. Yeah. Any more questions? No? Everyone is waiting for your tea break. <laughs> One more question? Okay. Well, um, uh, back to the slide on the accessibility of the uh, services. Oh, sorry. My name is Ong from the International AIDS Foundation, uh, based in Bangkok. Um, uh, on the slides based on the access to the uh, to the um, uh, health services, mostly you're talking about the provision of the uh, health system, but actually there are some other factors related to human behaviors, like uh, the decisions that why uh, people don't go to access services, including the uh, probably the proximity of their residents to the uh, health facilities and also other health issues like uh, they cannot uh, stay away from their work if they miss one day or the length of the time using services. So do you uh, do you uh, do you have any um, uh, uh, all of these factors taking into account when we consider about accessibility? Because uh, there's uh, two different things about between availability and accessibility. But now we're talking about access. It, it means that, that we have to think beyond the supply and the provision of the government commodities in order to make the health services available. So do we, so in, in order to achieve UHC, do you think that we should address the other social economic issues of the, uh, of, the, uh, of the clients or of the patients as well? And how do we address that? Excellent questions. Any more? Okay, one more. Yeah. <laughs> Please introduce yourself. Yes, thank you. My name is Kamalia Purbani. I'm from uh, the city of Bandung, the city government of Bandung. Uh, my position is a uh, deputy for uh, governance and social welfare uh, to the mayor, but I'm also a vice uh, head of commission, AIDS commission. What I would like to, I'm interested in the presentation, the last presentation regarding the analysis of investment for the HIV program. Um, uh, I, I'm, I'm just thinking about uh, our city. Uh, we, we don't have a problem with the accessibility to health services, uh, but uh, we just discussed about the I'm just uh, also uh, underline what, what has been uh, mentioned by the, the last uh, question. I mean, it, it's it's uh, related to the behavior of the, um, the men live with AIDS, live with IV AIDS, because uh, they, they don't want to be open status. It is it is make us very difficult. Uh, so uh, probably, uh, our program in the future should also uh, touch the uh, first we should also uh, recognize what is the characteristic of the uh, the, the, the man with I mean who live with AIDS and then uh, the second one we also have to uh, put some fund allocation for I mean uh, for to make them open status I mean, uh, probably you, you know what I mean. I mean to, I don't know what kind of, uh, to, to have a soup from the very uh, close circle to the family or to make, uh, I don't know what kind of programs, but I think this is, uh, can be an entry point or as a kind of uh, program to, to make, uh, they can have a better life. 
It, it sounds like there are very thematic questions, a lot around barriers. Um, yeah. Should, uh, for this first question, um, would anyone like to respond to the first question? Yeah. Yeah, for the question from Ray. Uh, I learned from the community that in Indonesia, for the marginal group that they don't, uh, don't have the ID card, actually they could register by group. So their NGOs or their community could register them. For example, the uh, transgender group or Sikandi group, they can uh, register their colleagues. So I think it's a good uh, approach and good news for all the community members. And for the third question from Ibu Kamaria from Bandung. Now, I think the most important thing that uh, they they want to be tested and they know their status. They, they do not need to do the op open their status, but as, no, as long as they know that they are HIV positive and they could get some uh, support from their group and they could be brought to the health services to get the treatment. I think that that's the most important thing. There, there are actually many policy innovations, and one of them is yeah. mentioned earlier that you can organize and create your own uh, collective and register as a group. Uh, in other countries, uh, an individual can just go to the hospital and access the services, and automatically you become part of the scheme. You don't even need an ID. Um, in Thailand, Thailand is actually a great, um, uh, I guess, a leader uh, on universal health coverage in the region. Uh, they also have uh, a separate scheme for migrant workers and they understand that uh, having ID or your legal document is a barrier so they just need to go to uh, the hospital and access the services. Uh, the other challenge is that you know, hospitals often don't speak the language of the clients or the migrant workers so that's, that's another uh, barrier. But there are many innovations but I guess what I want to emphasize is that to address these barriers, community mobilization is critical. The question is who finances, who supports, and who enables uh, community mobilization. Uh, there's a responsibility coming from uh, the community, but also even from other stakeholders, from the government and from the donors, to enable that kind of community, community mobilization needed to enhance access to the agency. I think those questions were addressed very well. Yes. By... <laughs> Let's go to the second one. Okay. Oh, the second one. Uh, I, I remember someone very smart said once that working in HIV is not rocket science, it's actually a lot harder because you are talking about the socio, political, cultural aspects of, of health, uh, which has no right answers. And this is in part answering the second question there. Um, but yeah, yes, I agree. You know, accessibility has got um, so much more to do than just being, having, it, uh, having the, the health technology or medicine available and also having it affordable. I mean, there are also other aspects to uh, the ensuring access. And when I brought up that slide, um, that four key dom domains of access, uh, which I, I, I didn't have time to go through all of them. One of them is uh, ensuring a good supply chain, right? Ensuring that a, we have medicine available, but then not only that, but ensuring that the medicine actually gets to the person who needs the medicine. Uh, and ensuring uh, quality as well of that particular medicine. Uh, so, and I guess that speaks to some extent to community systems. Like what Jonas was just saying then, you know, we need strong community systems to, particularly for that last mile. Sure, you can also talk about how it is that communities can engage in the, in the policy making in that process, but that last mile of ensuring that you get the medicine to the hand, into the hands of people who need them, that's critical, okay? Uh, and also the other aspects of that uh, of those four domains uh, include you know, uh, what we've already spoken about as well this morning, the uh, funding mechanism, ensuring we can actually have the resources to pay for these medicines. And also uh, what is equally as important is ensuring that, and it goes towards what I was saying about prioritization, making sure that, uh, and selection, making sure that we are selecting technologies or, or medicines that are most effective in terms of cost effectiveness, uh, that actually address the need of the country and the population, uh, and actually can make the biggest impact. So, you know, multiple factors. Uh, affordability is only one of them, yes, uh, which also is linked to availability, and that's what we're actually working on at the NZP. Thank you. 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 Thank you
Thank you very much. Very, very good questions and very good answers. <laughs> so I think we are ready for a coffee break, right? Everyone is so, such a heavy morning.